Hi, Saxon Geometry. We are jumping in today at lesson 52. And I'm really sorry, I'm a little bit uh, out of the norm. Um, I'm actually in Asheville, North Carolina, so I don't have my board behind me, so I've just got paper. So we'll do the best we can, but I wanted to take a few moments and talk with you guys about our lessons this week. So we're looking at lesson 52, and that starts on page 343. So some of the concepts that we're dealing with are the properties of rectangles. So an important thing to remember is that a rectangle has all four 90 degrees. So those diagonals, when they intersect, um, those diagonals are also congruent. So that's really important. Remember opposite sides on a rectangle are congruent, but also the diagonals. And that's gonna be important if you take a standardized test and they tell you, given it's a rectangle and the diagonals, then immediately you'll be able to know, wow, there's some special special um, things that I can do here with this, especially knowing that their angles are 90 degrees as well, because that uh, right uh, angle opens up so much with Pythagorean theorem and sine, cosine, and tangent. So there's a lot uh, that that's important to remember about. All right, if you'll turn to page 344 and look with me the properties of a rhombus. Don't forget that a rhombus has all four sides that are congruent. So um, a, a reminder to us on page 344 says that um, the diagonals of a rhombus are actually perpendicular to each other. So again, that's gonna help knowing the sides are congruent and then the diagonals make 90 degrees. So again, you've got that um, Pythagorean theorem that's built in there. All right, and then also it talks to you about those diagonals are gonna be um, angle bisectors. So wherever those diagonals go, um, the angles that it intersects is going to be um, equal to each other. All right, so those are bisectors, meaning it cuts it in half, right? So they've given you some examples there. And uh, look at example two on um, page 345. It, it gives you a rhombus. And then it says, find the measure of each angle. Well, it gives you an angle at, at B and an angle at C. Well, we know that a rhombus, their diagonals are 90 degrees. Now, B and C is not um, bisected because it's not part of each other. Um, but um, we truly want to make sure that B and C, we understand, would be complementary. So um, that means that uh, we add them together and make sure they're 90 degrees. So let's look at our lesson practice. Letter A says that um, it, it gives us the rectangle and it tells us that MO is 5.4. What is the length of NP? Well, we know that both of those are the diagonals because they're not touching each other, right? Because they are not, um, since they're not uh, sides on it, they're the diagonals. We know that diagonals of a rectangle are congruent. So the simple answer for letter A is 5.4. No math is needed, we just know that they're congruent. All right, take a look at letter B and it talks to us about a rhombus. And again, this is the same as example two. Um, since they're adjacent to each other, they're not bisected, they're adjacent, part of the same triangle. So we're going to add them together and make them 90 degrees. They're complementary. So that's how we would solve letter B. All right, and um, then letter um, C, it says O, Y, and Z. Again, once we know what uh, 4X plus two is, since we know um, that amount, then um, we can just add in. We found out that X is 10 in letter B, so we just plug that in. So um, since we know that um, it would be 48, then we know that OYZ is gonna be 42. OYZ is 42 just by solving those. All right, so you're just gonna continue on your practice using that information. So I hope that that's a help to you. All right, um, look at 5-3, um, and it talks about 45, 45, 90 triangles. And one thing I wanna point out to you with this is that anytime that you have a right triangle, 
that the legs are congruent. That's called a 45-45-90. And we know that because um, each of the legs are the same, so therefore the angles have to be the same. So it would have to be 45, 45, and then don't forget your right triangle makes 90. So some interesting things take place. I know that the legs are equivalent, so the ratio for those would just be X. Each leg would have to be X. So this is a wonderful shortcut. The hypotenuse would therefore have to be X times the square root of two. So anytime you're solving those, that's super important. So if I tell you one leg is nine, then if this leg is nine, then also this leg would be nine because these two legs are congruent to each other, nine and nine. Then the hypotenuse would be nine square root of two. And you can plug that in and round it to the nearest hundredth or you can just leave it as a radical, nine square root of two. Now the difficult part is when they give you the hypotenuse, then you're gonna have to solve that. A little bit different. So let's talk about that. What if I tell you that the hypotenuse is seven. So if I tell you that the hypotenuse equals seven, all right, so that means that the longest side is seven, how would I figure out what X is? Well, I would simply say X square root of two equals seven, set it equal, and then solve for your X. So if I'm solving for X, I would divide by square root of two, both sides, right? So if I divide by square root of two, both sides, that's gonna give me seven over the square root of two. Now I know that that's not proper because I can't have a radical in the denominator. So what I have to do is rationalize the denominator. So X equals seven square root of two over two. So that would be my final answer. Or I could even um, divide two into seven and it would be 3.5 square root of two. Again, you can multiply that out and round the answer, or you can just leave it in radical form. So it's, it's much easier when they tell you one leg is a number, because like if they say a leg is five, it's five, five, five square root of two is the hypotenuse. Hypotenuse is always gonna be your longest side. So it makes it a little easier when they give you the leg, but when they don't, you can still solve it. And an example of that is on page 351, and um, it works it out and shows you how to rationalize that denominator, just like I just showed you. All right, so um, you're gonna be using that information on practice A, um, uh, page 351. They told us a leg is 31, so it has to be 31 is the other leg, and then um, the hypotenuse is 31 square root of two. So this is a wonderful lesson, it's super quick, and it's a great reminder to us of um, uh, just that ratio of um, hypotenuse right triangles. Now, lesson 54, I'm going to tell you about, but I'm not going to draw, my friends. I love geometry, but I'm not good at drawing. So, um, I, I hope that you'll enjoy this. Some students really enjoy it, and some um, may be more um, artistically challenged like me. So, um, I totally understand that. So, I do want to point out to you that this is all about perspective. So it's, it's a great application in drafting. Um, I love it and I respect it. I just can't see it or do it. Um, I have some of my own children who are very good at drawing and I'm super proud of them, but that is not a gift they got from their mother. So um, if you'll look um, on page 356, it takes you step-by-step step into drawing perspective. And I've actually done it, but uh, have you ever seen the, the TV show where it, it's supposed to be, um, um, uh, professional cake decorators have made something and someone else has to reproduce it. It's called Nailed It. And it's super funny because what they try to replicate. So if I tried to replicate this, I would not nail it. Um, you guys would be so disappointed. So um, please know that just do your best and uh, try to do those perspectives. I would encourage you to use a straight edge, a ruler, or um, maybe the side of a book or a piece of paper and try to use those perspectives. It, it helps a lot to have those straight edges and a great eraser, all right? So um, lesson um, 54, you will not be tested on, but it's a great application. So I hope you'll enjoy it. Now, the last lesson we're looking at this week is triangle mid-segment theorem. And just to understand that um, the theorem on page 361, RQ and PM, um, they are parallel to each other. So RQ, RQ equals half of P 
p.m. So since they're in a relationship with each other and they're equal distant on the opposite sides where NQ is congruent to QM and then NR is congruent to RP, since that relationship is there in the triangle, then also the mid segments are exactly half of the parallel side. So there's some great relationships there that you can use. So uh, your ratios, um, setting all that up is, is uh, just really, really gonna help you be able to solve them. Uh, notice they gave you an example of a proof and that's on page 362. Um, so there's a lot of possibilities that are opened up. They give you an example on a coordinate plane on example three. So uh, you're actually going to uh, begin your lesson practice on page 364. It gives you that TU is a mix mid segment, find the values of X and Y. Well, it's important to know that the relationship we just uncovered um, says that RT is congruent to TQ. So we know that if RT is eight, then TQ has to be eight as well. And um, that would be the Y. So again, this is uh, lesson 55 and we're on page uh, 364. Um, so um, that's super important for you to understand those relationships and understand exactly what's going on with those. Um, so um, Y, we just figured out was eight since they're congruent to each other. Now, according to our theorem that we just um, talked about, TU is half of uh, QS. So if TU is 12, then I know double it, X has to be 24, all right? Letter B, you're doing a proof and don't let that overwhelm you. The book did it in 14 steps um, and uh, a lot of them are definition of midpoints. Um, definitions um, are, are super important to know how to apply those. So since we know the definition of a midpoint, AD has to be congruent to DB. So um, you're also gonna use substitution and um, uh, they used actually the definition of midpoint twice. So I hope that that's a help to you and don't, don't let proofs overwhelm you. All right, well, I hope you guys have a great week and it looks like our lessons aren't gonna be too difficult. Hopefully a little bit of fun for you artists out there and I hope you guys have a great week. Thanks so much.